I'm very happy to be here. Niko na furaha kuwa hapa. It's uh, you know this is wonderful place. Na haya ni maeneo ya kuvutia sana. I've seen 20 different kinds of birds out there. Nimeona aina 20 tofauti za ndege kule nje. Now you see the birds every day. Umnajua hizo ndege hao ndege huwa mnawaona kila siku. You may not pay attention. Lakini wewe haunanga ule uangalivu wa kutazama kabisa. When I see the birds I'm very happy. Lakini ninapoona wale ndege mimi nafurahishwa. I also video tape some of the birds. Nimezi zingine nimeziweka kwenye video yangu. Now here I will talk about we're going to have a evangelistic meeting very soon. Eh eh kwa muda mchache tuenda kuwa na mkutano wa nje kule. It's very important that we all prepare for these meetings. Ni ya muhimu sana kwamba sisi sote tukajiandae kwa ajili ya huo mkutano. For these meetings to be successful, mkutano huu kufaulu is not just having loud music. Sio tu ni lazima tukue na zile miziki ambazo zinacheza sauti ya juu sana. It's how we care about these people who come. Ni jinsi zile tunaenda kuwajali wale watu wanaokuja kwenye huo mkutano. That we have compassion on them. Ya kwamba tuko na upendo nao. That we want them to be blessed. Ya kwamba tutaka wabarikiwe. And then when they come, na wanapokuja, we welcome them. Tunawakaribisheni. We we uh, you know uh, ask them things about themselves about them uwaulize hali vipi umetoka wapi umeshindaje vitu kama hizo na some of them you already know watu wengine tayari mshajua mambo haya and you you can say something like wow welcome here my friend unaweza mwambia ah rafiki yangu karibu sana katika ibada hii so happy to see you niko na furaha kukuona and uh, how are you unamuuliza eh za za kushinda <laughs> za siku za kuamka <laughs> okay now it's very important that we listen ni la muhimu sana kusikiliza the bible says that we we should be quick to listen biblia inasema kwamba tuwe wepesi wa kusikiliza slow to speak lakini tuwe wachache wa kuongea slow to be angry tuwe na uchache wa kukasirika whenever people talk wakati watu wanapoongea they are saying something about themselves huwa wanajizungumzia wanatoa ushuhuda kuwahusu and then when we hear something about them na tunaposikia mambo yoyote kuwahusu immediately we think about their needs Unaposikia wanaposema lazima uanze kutafakari mahitaji yao their feelings hisia zao and respond to their needs and their feelings na ukaitikie kwenye zile hisia na mahitaji yao that way you make connection with people hapo utakuwa umefanya muunganiko na hao watu and you want to keep that connection na ni lazima ukashikilie ule muunganiko and then in the future you can keep them and bring them to the church siku zijazo basi waweza pia kuwaelekeza kanisani so the first thing is we have compassion on these people. Ya kwanza lazima uwe na utu kwa wale watu ambao wanakuja. The Bible says God desires mercy, not sacrifice. Maandiko yanasema kwamba Mungu anataka rehema sio dhabihu tu. Whenever you see anyone come you have compassion on them. Unapoona yule yeyote anapokuja basi ukakuwe na utu na yeye. I want something good to happen to them. Upia ukue na ile fikiria kwamba yule mtu anayekuja wataka mema imtendekee. I want blessings to go to them. Nataka unataka baraka ziwaendee. And I want to care about them. Na unataka kuwajali so that in our heart we think about them. Ya kwamba ndani ya mioyo zetu tunawafikiria. It's very easy for us just to look at a meeting Ni rahisi sana sisi tu kutazama kwenye mkutano. And say how many people have come. Na tuseme tuhesabu ni wangapi wamehudhuria leo. But actually it's not the most important thing is how not how many people come. Lakini la muhimu sio kwamba ni wangapi wamekuja kwenye mkutano. But whether we can make friends with them. Lakini la muhimu ni lile ambalo tutaweza kutengeneza urafiki nao. If we can make friends with them. Kama tutaweza kutengeneza urafiki nao and have good connection. Na tukuwe na kuunganika vizuri. It's much easier to keep these people. Ni rahisi sana kuweka hawa watu. Now I heard that in this place some people have gone to other churches. Nimesikia kwamba maeneo haya watu wametoroka kwenye hili kanisa wakaenda kwenye makanisa mengine because other churches have a sound system. Manake yale yale makanisa mengine yako na viombo vizuri zinavutia and we might think that a sound system is more important. Na tunaweza fikiria kwamba labda hizo viombo ni vitu za muhimu sana. But actually for many people, lakini kwa watu wengi, 
Now, it's true that music do excite them. Ni ukweli manake muziki unasisimua, but if they find you very caring for them. Lakini wakikupata kwamba unawajali kabisa. Then you will listen to them. Ya kwamba waweza kuwasikiliza. And respond to them. Na unaweza kuitikia. They will remember you. Watakukumbuka. And then you go to visit them. Na unapoenda kuwatembelea. And make friends with them. Na utengeneze urafiki nao. Okay, now I'm going to go into the listening. Nataka kwenda kuzungumza kwa kusikiliza. And how to respond to people? Na jinsi ya kuitikia kwa watu. That way you can make friendship. Njia hiyo waweza kutengeneza connection with people. Wa uweze kuunganika na watu. That we should be quick to listen. Ili kwamba tuku tuwe wepesi wa kusikiliza. Now I don't know about your culture how you would talk. Sijui tamaduni zenu ziko namna gani wakati mnapoongea. Now it's very common for us sometimes to ask how are you? How are you? Ni ni jambo la kawaida sisi kumwambia mtu kumuuliza habari yako umeshindaje? Do you ask people that question? Je, huwa mnasalimiana hivyo? Yes. Mnasema yes ama no. Yes. Leo tutajifunza Kiingereza. Kila mmoja ataongea Kiingereza. Okay. Now when they answer now do they answer and tell you something about themselves and the family do they sometimes tell you about those things wakati unapomwamkua mtu unamwambia za kushinda na kuambia ako salama huwa anajaribu kukueleza kuhusu familia yake mahitaji yake hisia zake anajaribu kukueleza hivyo wakati unauliza mtu za kushinda anakuambia unamuuliza nyumbani kama kuna tatizo huko sasa atakwambia eh eh they say yes yes okay now, now we can ask specific questions sasa tuweza kuuliza yale maswali ya kulenga like how is your farming how do you ask unamuuliza eh you, you say farming farming the, you know, the, the unaweza muuliza mtu muulize he na kilimo cha kwako kinaendeleaje and uh, how is your family na familia yako nayo iko oje now the first thing is where do you live kitu cha kwanza umuulize basi wewe unaishi wapi let me ask you the people who come do you usually know them ni waulize wale watu wanaokuja kwenye mikutano kama mko nazo ni wale watu mnajua ama kuna wageni wanakujia ama wenye hamu watambui do you usually know them they know some and know some are visitors Okay, but what I mean is, the visitors who came, do you know the people, uh, or or you? Some of them you don't know, right? Kila najari bokuli zani kwamba wale wageni wanao kujia katika mikutano zenu ni wale ambao muna watambua ama hamu watambui. It's a mixture here. Okay, they attend both known and both unknown. Okay, okay. Now, the first thing is. How many people have the courage to welcome people? Jambo la kwanza ni kuamba je, ni watu wangapi ambao wako na ile nia ya ku ya kukaribisha watu? Can you raise your hand? How many people wangapi kati yenu ambao wanaweza kukaribisha watu ndo anasema anauliza. Kama kama kuna mtu ambaye ako na ule moyo wa kukaribisha mtu anaweza kuwakaribisha basi muinue mkono kama hamuna tuachane na hiyo tufunge mkutano umeishi Okay so first thing is courage cha kwanza deus courage cha, cha kwanza ni lazima ukue mtu ambaye uko na ule moyo wa kukaribisha yani hauna soni mnajua soni haya hauna haya basi the second thing is in our heart we care for about them. Jambo lingine ni kwamba ndani ya moyo wako basi ule na ule utu wa kujali mtu. That we have compassion on them. Ya kwamba uko na upendo nao. But when we have compassion on them, don't be, don't be too fast to tell them about Jesus. Na hata kama vile uko na upendo nao, usikuwe mwepesi wa kuanza kuahubiria injili kuhusu Kristo. Unless you know that they are already a Christian. Ni lazima ujue mtu huyo ameokoka ndo aanze kumwambia mambo ya Kristo Yesu. Because some people may not be open to Jesus yet. Manake watu wengine waweza kuwa hawajafunguliwa kwa Kristo Yesu kabisa. So you can talk to them about their farming, unaweza 
Kwa hivyo unapokutana na hawa watu unaanza kwa kuwauliza kuhusu familia yao, wanaendelea vipi kule nyumbani, mambo kama hayo. And also you can ask them about the health. Na sasa pia waweza kuwauliza afya zao. And then for children, na kwa watoto, you can play with them, hold their hands. Unaweza cheza nao, mwashike mikono. Do you have the habit of holding hands of children? Je, wangapi hapa wako na yale mazoea kwamba kutana na watoto na washika mikono wanacheza cheza nao? Kunao yote hapa kweli? Okay, now children will really respond to you. You know, you play with them or you touch them. Eh watoto nao wanapojua kwamba wewe ni mtu ambaye unawapenda basi watakupenda na watapenda kukaa mahali upo. Okay. Now so the first thing is to make the connection. Kitu cha kwanza basi ni kutambua na kutengeneza muunganiko. And ask them how they are. Na uwaulize hawa watu wako hali gani. Now some people won't tell you much. Watu wengi hawatakueleza zaidi kwa usu. And then sometimes you can say welcome I'm happy to see you here. Na wakati mwingine unaweza uambie kwamba karibu sana niko na furaha kukuona hapa. But sometimes people will tell you their needs. Na wakati mwingine basi watu watakueleza mahitaji yao. Now for instance you can uh, you can say something like you know Jesus can heal us. Ehe unayasema unaweza sema jambo kama unajua Yesu anaweza kutuponya. Do you have any sickness you like Jesus to heal you? Je, uko na magonjwa yote ungelipenda Yesu akuponye? And then if the person talks, na kama mtu basi ataongea, we want to listen. Lazima tusikilize. It's very important say quick to listen. Ni ya muhimu ndio maana yake tunasema kwamba uwe mwepesi wa kusikiliza. For instance if someone says I feel painful here. Kwa mfano mtu akikwambia kwamba anasikia tumbo lake linamsokota. I have some health problem. Niko na matatizo ya kiafya. Immediately think of if I had that problem, ni lazima wewe unayeambiwa basi ukavae kile kiatu ujifanye kuwa pia wewe ni wewe unayeumwa. How would I feel? Na kama ungelikuwa ni wewe unaumwa basi ungehisi namna gani? As if we were the one who has the sickness. Kama ule yule mtu ambaye akona yale matatizo sasa ni wewe. Now this is very important. Na hii ni ya muhimu that we feel the feeling of the person. Ya kwamba lazima ujihisi jinsi vile yule mgonjwa anavyojihisi. That's how you can make connection. Hapo ndivyo unavyoweza kufanya muunganiko. When you have the connection, kama uko na muunganiko huu, you can keep the people. Unaweza waweka watu. Now people don't just go to church with good sound system. Sio kwamba watu wanaenda kwa kanisa kwa sababu lile kanisa liko na vyombo vizuri. In Hong Kong there are big churches there are small churches. Kule kwao kuna makanisa kubwa na madogo. But people still go to the small churches. Lakini watu bado wanaingia kwenye zile makanisa ndogo because they are friends there. Manake kuna marafiki pale. So sound system is not what attracts people. Eh eh basi vyombo vikubwa haimaanishi ndilo kanisa. It's how people care about them. Kanisa basi inamaanisha ni jinsi gani watu wanavyojaliana kule kanisani. Listen to them. Ni jinsi gani mtu watu wanaposikilizana kule kanisani. And respond to them. Wana kuitikia, wanaitikia vipi? And care about them. Na kule kujali and help them. Na kuwasaidia. Okay. Now, let's go to if someone says I have pain here. Aya wacha basi tushughulikie ile jambo tuseme kwamba kama mtu anakuambia ako na maumivu. What can we say? Can you say what can we say to the person? Aya sasa ili swali tunataka jibu kutoka kwenu. Mnasikiliza na vizuri? Tunaelewana? Mtu umekutana na mtu anakuambia anaumwa na tumbo. Utamsaidia vipi? Jambo lako la kwanza kumwambia itakuwa ni gani? Okay. Mhm. Ask them. Okay. Encourage them to answer the question. How will you answer? Ni maswali na majibu. Sasa ninahitajika mtoe majibu sawa? Eh, nyosheni mikono huko alikwambia unaumwa unafanyaje? Toi ni majibu tuendelee. Inua mkono wako unatujibu. Because okay. Mtu unaponana naye ukimsalimia akikwambia ninaumwa, unaanza kumwambia je hospitali umeisha enda? She says that when you meet somebody who has health problems, the first thing to ask him or her, have you visited any hospital? Okay. Yeah, that is possible. Thank you. And she wanted to answer the question too. 
What is she say? Eh, unapokutana na mtu kama huyo akakwambia kwamba naumwa. Mhm. Kwanza namaanisha upendo ambao unaompenda. If you meet somebody like that, you show him or her love. Kisha namwambia pole. Then you tell him or her I'm sorry. Kisha unaanza kumwambia kwamba then you now start asking him or if he can visit a hospital. But see, if that person is not in a position of visiting a hospital, she says that she will have to help her to go to hospital. Okay. Um, now, uh, the, both of you said something about hospital. If the person has very serious sickness, and you can ask them that question. But very, very often, the most important thing, when someone comes to a meeting for, you know, for healing because he has sickness problem, he's looking for help from God. Now, of course, you can talk to them about the hospital too. But even if they come to us for prayer, for, for help from God, the most important thing is to think of their feelings. For instance, if you are having pain right now, and then you come to the meeting, and someone tell you, would you like to go to the hospital? She wants to, to, to try to answer the question. Okay. She said that you will pray for him or her. I just say, what, what did she say? Prayers. You pray for okay. that sick person. Okay. Now, that's not the first step either. Be because... The first thing is when someone is in pain or some kind of discomfort, the first thing we can say is, oh, it must be difficult for you. It's not easy for you that you have this pain. How long have you this pain? Do you have this pain? And then listen and watch how they respond. Respond to their feelings. Now, some of you might say, is it so important? Now, I use another example. Now, if in your family, something just happened. For instance, someone in your family gets very, uh, or maybe the person just passed away in your family. And then, uh, you know, the person go, you know, you ask the person, the person said, oh, someone just passed away. For instance, if one of you has that happened to you, and then you are very sad, and then if the person just say, for instance, um, well, don't be sad, the person has passed away. He has he's in heaven now. If we answer like that, what happens is we are just responding, not responding to the feeling. 
tunajibu tu lakini hatuitikii kwenye hisia zake if you are very unhappy kama basi hauna furaha one of your family member has passed away eh uh-huh. mtu wa familia yako mmoja amefariki imagine how you will feel una si una si ni uchungu mm-hmm. unasikia vile ni uchungu would you be very sad utakuwa na uzuni unasema yeah. yes mtakuwa na uzuni yes. yes and then the person says Oh, you must be very unhappy. Na sasa mtu mwingine akuja kukwambia ah ndugu yangu ama dada yangu najua kwamba hauna furaha. And then another person says don't cry. Na mwingine atoke huko akwambie wacha na kulia wacha kujisumbua ukilia. He is in heaven. Don't cry. Ako kule mbinguni wacha kulia. Now let me ask you when you are very sad. Wacha nikuulize kama uko na huzuni. When this two person one says I know You are very unhappy. Kati ya hao wawili yule anayekuambia najua samahani. I know you miss I know you miss him or her. Najua unamkosa zaidi. Okay, one person. Another person says, "Well, don't worry. Don't be sad." Mwingine anakuja na kuambia, "Ah, wachana na hiyo. Wacha kuhuzunika, wacha kulia. Don't cry. Wacha kulia." Which one makes you feel more comforted? Ni kati ya hao watu wawili ni nani anakufanya usikie kwamba umefarijika? The first one says, I know you are unhappy. Wa kwanza anasema kwamba najua hauna furaha. And the second person says, don't be sad. Na wa pili atakwambia aachana na mambo ya kulia. Okay. Now which one would you So ni yupi ambaye atakufanya usikie umefarijika? Which one will make you feel better? Wa kwanza ama wa pili? Wa kwanza anasema kwamba najua ni magumu. Na wa pili anakuambia waachane na hiyo mambo acha kulia. So mtu wa mgani ambaye atakusaidia? The first one. Yeah, okay. Now, you know in Romans chapter 12, katika Warumi 12, it says weep with those who are mourning. Maandiko yanasema kwamba basi mkaomboleze na wale wanaoomboleza. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Mfurahie na wale wanaofurahia. If someone is very unhappy, kama mtu basi hana furaha, he's crying, analia. And then you say, don't cry. Analia wewe unataka kunamwambia waachana na kulia. We don't feel the feeling of the person. Ina maanisha hauna hisia za huyo mtu. But if someone says, oh, I know must you must be hurt. Lakini mtu akikwambia oh najua lazima umejeruhiwa. You must be very unhappy. Ni lazima uwe hauna furaha. The person will feel he feels my feeling. Yaani huyo mtu sasa anahisi ile hisia zako. So I hope you remember this. So ninakumbuka na naamini kwamba utakumbuka haya. When someone talks about his needs his problems. Mtu anapokuambia kuhusu mahitaji yake. Immediately you can say this. Uwaweza kumwambia hili and then you can they can say after you. Murudia haya maneno nyumba yangu, sawa? Yes. Uh-huh. You must be unhappy. Najua hauna furaha, sema. Najua hauna furaha. It must be difficult for you. Najua ni magumu kwako. It's not easy to have that health problem. Sio rahisi kuwa na hayo matatizo ya kiafya. Sio rahisi kuwa na matatizo ya kiafya. Now, if he has health problem, na sasa kama ako na matatizo ya kiafya, we can also ask how long have you had the pain? Uwaweza kumuuliza na je, maumivu haya umekuwa nayo kwa muda gani? And say How long have you? Je, maumivu haya umekuwa nayo? Haya turudie sasa. Je, maumivu haya umekuwa nayo kwa muda gani? Najua sio rais kwako. Does it hurt? Je, inaumiza? Je, inaumiza. Okay. Now, if someone says my crops are not growing. Aha, kwa mfano mtu aje akwambie kwamba mimea zake kwenye kule shamba hazifanyi vizuri. How would they feel inside? Huyo mtu anahisi namna gani kwenye moyo wake? Yeah, right. And then you you tell them, okay, I'll teach you how to grow the crops. Alafu naye huyo mwenye um mnaongea naye atakwambia kwamba wacha nikufunze jinsi ya kupanda mimea. But that will be the next step. Lakini hiyo itakuwa hatua ya pili. The first step we can say. Hatua ya kwanza inafaa tuseme you must be unhappy when your crops are not growing. Najua kwamba hauna furaha maana yake mimea yako haifanyi vizuri. Does it make it difficult for your family? Je, inafanya familia yako inakuwa na hali ngumu? Now let me ask you. Wasa nikuulize. Do you sometimes feel unhappy? 
Je, kuna wakati ambapo unasikia hauna furaha? Yes. 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 Do many people say to you, oh, you know, do people say to you, pray and you won't be unhappy? Ehe, uo, icho kipindi ambacho hauna furaha. Je, kuna wakati kutu unakuja wa kuambia kuamba, ah, we omba mungu hauta kuwa na mzuni. Okay, that's the first person who says, pray and you'll be happy. Mtu wa kuanza ta kuambia kuamba, ah, kama hauna furaha, we omba tu mungu, mungu ta kuregeshea yu furaha. And then the second person says to you, Na mtu wa pila ta kuambia, I know it's very difficult. <laughs> Najua ni magumu in your family, katika familia, or whatever situation, ama katika ile hali yoyote ile, that will make you unhappy. Ambayo inakufanya usikuwe na furaha. Now, which one do you like more? Ungelipenda mtu yupi kati hawa wa watu wawili? The second person. The second one, right. Yes. But it's very common for Christians always to say, Lakini ni jambo la kawaida kwa wakristo kusema, Don't be unhappy. Usi, usi kasirike. Pray to God. Omba mungu. God will help you. Mungu wata kusaidia. Now this is telling people what to do. Haya ni mambo ya kuambia watu ya kufanya. The wife's here. Wakina mama hapa. Now sometimes you tell your husband, oh I have this problem. Wakati wengine wale ambao wako na mabwana unamuambia kwamba ni kuna tatizo hili. The children are not listening to me. Hawa watoto hawani sikilizi. The children have problem. Hawa watoto wako na matatizo. And then if your husband said, no problem. Na sisa mume wako na ya kuambia, ah. You have, to, you have to do this, do that. Wewe fanya hili, fanya hili. It will be very difficult. Itakuwa ngumu. I mean, no. When, and, and you just do this, do this, it will be, the problem will be solved. Ati wewe fanya hili, fanya hili, mambo etaisha. Now this is the first husband. Huyu ni mme wa kwanza. And the second husband. Mme wa pili. He says to you. Ala kuambia. You must be unhappy. Najua hauna fura. It's difficult for you to do these things. Ni viku mkwako kufanya mambo haya. Now, how would you like your husband to answer? Akina mama, mungi lipenda wa umezenu wa wajibu waje kama hui wa kwanza ama hui wa pili. The second one. Alright. So you now you know how important it is for us to feel the feeling of people. Sasa ona vile ilio la muhimu kwamba ukapate kusiku kuhisi jinzi vile yu mtu mwenye kona shida na jihisi. When we feel their feelings, unapo hisi hisi ya zao, they realize someone care about them. Ehe, wana kumbuka kugundua kwamba kuna mtu wana tujari. And they will be attracted to you. Na sasa watavutiwa kwako, Every time you see them, kila wakati unapo waona, you care about what happened to them, unajali kile kilicho wafanyikia. And then they would like to come to you. Na sasa watakuwa na furaha kuja kuwako. Now the first thing you can do, cha kwanza ambacho wafaa kufanya, is to care about each other. Nilazima uwe mtu wa kujali mwenzako. Listen to each other. Ukasikilize mwenzako. When someone says I'm unhappy, mtu wa kisema kuwa ma mimi sina furaha, what do you say? Utamwambia aji? Unakutana na mtu Do you say pray and you'll be happy Unakutana na mtu Unamsalimu na kuambia hana fraje Utamujibu kuamba we omba tu Ama utamujibu vipi Or what do you say Utasema aji Utamuhita kwa nini ya muna fraje She said that you will ask that person What is What is the reason why he is not happy Okay you can ask And then the person says the reason, then what, how do you say? Mutu akikisha kuambia ni kwa nini ye hana furaha, utawendalea kumambia ati. Mutu akikisha kuambia ni kwa nini ye hana furaha, utawendalea kumambia ati. Mutu akikisha kuambia ni kwa nini ye hana furaha, utawendalea kumambia ati. Asha kueleza, utawendalea kumambia ati. Akikisha nileza, ni kwa halari kumambia, kumusi. Ili, atulize mawazo, awe na msimamu wakujua kwamba, kama ni mmewaka mempiga, ata kama ni ndugu yaki. Aksema mimi ndiyako mbibu. She says that she will encourage that person because she is, that person is unhappy. She will encourage to make to, to cool him down. How do you cool him down? How do you do it? What do you say? So, akona uzuni labda mepigwa, sindio? Amen. Utamuambia aje ndo ila asira irubi chini. Utamuambia ipi? umepigwa basi tulia hebu kaa utulie kwanza mawazo ya kutulia uachane na hayo ndio ya dunia ya libi anaweza kutafakari what she is trying to, to say here is that she will encourage that person telling telling her for example is a wife and the husband has beaten her 
she she will encourage her, telling her that it is normal for it. It, it happens to, to other people. Okay. It is not you alone. Okay. Now, listen to this. I ask Lisa hi. When we are doing saying like that, you know, someone else, someone else are also suffering like that. Tunapofanya hamambo haya, kuna pia mahali pengine mtu anapitia hali hii. We are teaching that person. Tunafundisha huyo mtu. When they are unhappy, wakati hawana furaha, people don't like to be taught. Watu hawapendi kufundishwa wakiwa na asira. Now, if you are unhappy, kama wewe uko na na asira, your husband says to you, mume wako anakuambia, many wives are unhappy. Wamama wengi hawana furaha. Don't worry about that. Kwa hivyo hiyo isikujalishe. Many children are disobedient. Watoto wengi hawatii. Don't worry about it. Usikujalishe hiyo. You're just teaching. Ya hapo unafundisha. As I said, it's more important to feel the feeling of the person. Jinsi niliyosema ni la muhimu sana wewe kuanza kuhisi zile hisia za watu wengine hao. To say yes, you must be unhappy. Useme kama najua kwa kweli hauna furaha. Now this is something very hard for us to learn. Hili ni jambo gumu kwetu sisi kujifundisha. When someone talk, you think about the heart. Wakati mtu anapoongea, anza kufikiria kuhusu roho yake. And then I will feel the same feeling. Na sasa pia mimi nitaanza kuhisi jinsi anavyohisi. In that situation is difficult. Katika hali hiyo ngumu. And then I will say, yes, I know it's not easy for you. Na na nitamwambia kwamba najua kwa kweli sio rahisi kwako. With a family situation like that, it's not easy. Familia ikiwa na matatizo kama haya sio rahisi. With a health problem like that, it's not easy. Ukiwa na matatizo ya kiafya sambuli hii sio rahisi. That is having compassion. Hiyo inaitwa kuwa na utu. People don't like teachers. Watu hawapendi walimu. Are your husband sometimes like teachers? Je, waume zenu wakati mwingine ni kama walimu? Do you like a husband who teaches you all the time? Je, unapenda yule mume ambaye anakufundisha kila wakati? Or do you like a husband who says I know how you feel? Ama unapenda yule mume ambaye anakuimiza, anakutia moyo katika hali ngumu na kuambia najua vile hali unayopitia. I know you're unhappy. Najua hauna furaha. Yes. Unapenda yule mwalimu ama unapenda yule wa kukuimiza? So, what kind of husband do you like? Unapenda yupi kati ya waume wawili? A teacher or someone who feels your feeling. Mume wa kwanza ni mwalimu ambaye anakushurutisha ufanya hili fanya hili fanya hili wa pili ni yule ambaye anakuimiza katika ile hali ngumu unayopitia. So, unapenda mgani kati hawa wawili? Wawili. The second one. Right. Now you understand it's very important. Unaona sasa ni ya muhimu kuelewa. When I hear someone talk, naposikia mtu akinena, I feel his feeling. Unahisi una hisia zake. And then I would tell him, na sasa utamwambia, I feel his feeling. Unahisi zile hisia zake. I feel unhappy too when you are unhappy. Ya kwamba unapokasirishwa hata mimi nasikia nimekasirishwa. I know it's not easy. Najua sio rahisi. Now, do you understand this? No. Do you, now, just now you said, yes, I want a husband who has compassion. But the moment when we talk, we like to be a teacher. How many of you like a husband to be a teacher? Always teaching you what to do. Yaani kila siku akikwambia ni kucho akiamka ni kuchorea program ya boma ufanye hili ufanye hili ufanye hili. Now even for our pastors, na, I want to say this. Na hata kwa wachungaji ningelipenda kusema hivi. Some members come to the pastor and say, "Oh, I just have a family fight and I'm and I'm unhappy." Washirika wengine watakuja kwenye kanisa waambie mchungaji, "Tumekuwa na matatizo ya kifamilia, tumepigana." Now some pastor will have a tendency to say, "Wachungaji wengi wako na tabia ya kusema, "Go home and repent." Enda nyumbani na utubu. Be nice to him. Uwe mzuri kwa mumeo. Forgive him. Ukamsamehe. Now, it's a tendency for many Christians and pastors have a tendency to teach. 
Sasa unapata kwamba ni tabia haswa sana ya wachungaji wanapenda kufundisha. But if the pastor responds, lakini kama mchungaji anaitikia, I know it's difficult for you. Najua unapitia kipindi kigumu. I know life is not difficult. Najua maisha sio rahisi. So it makes you feel unhappy. Ninakufanya hauna furaha. And then we can tell the grace of God. Na sasa tunaweza waambia neema ya Mungu. Instead of telling him what to do. Badala ya kuambia kile cha kufanya, you know I care about you. Unajua ninakujali. God cares about you too. Mungu anakujali zaidi. God knows your suffering. Mungu anajua mapito yako. God wants to comfort you. Mungu anataka kukufariji. And would you like me to pray for you? Je, ungelipenda nikuombe? Let me ask you. Wacha nikuulize. Which pastor do you like more? Or, or Christian leader? Ni kati hao mchungaji wawili, yule wa kukwambia nenda nyumbani utubu na yule wa kukwambia kwamba anakuimiza ni ni mgani unapenda. When you are suffering, wakati wao pitia katika matatizo, the teacher or the pastor will tell you do this, do that, repent and forgive. Wakati uko katika matatizo, kuna yule atakwambia kwamba fanya hili, fanya hili, fanya hili enda utubu. Or another leader or pastor will say to you I know it's unhappy for you. Kiongozi mwingine atakwambia kwamba najua sio rahisi kwangu. I know it's not easy. Najua sio rahisi. I care about you. Ninakujali. God cares about you. Mungu anakujali. Can I pray for you? Je, naweza kukuombea? God wants to comfort your heart. Mungu anataka kufariji roho yako. Now which one do you like more? Ungelipenda mgani, wa kwanza ama wewe wa pili? The second one. Right. So, now do you understand it's very important to mourn with those who are crying. Unaona sasa unaona unaona sasa ni muhimu kufanya vile Warumi 12 nasema kwamba uka ukaomboleze na wale wanaoomboleza and rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Na ufurahie na wale wanaofurahia. Now he sounds very happy. Mtu amefurahi. Now some people say don't laugh so loud. Wewe uko na furaha si ndio? Unacheka kicheko na mtu anatoka huko anakupiga ngoto unajua ngoto. Anakuambia wacha kucheka. But some people might might say watu wengine waweza kusema I'm happy you're happy. Niko na furaha manake uko na furaha. I'm happy with you. Nimefurahi pamoja nawe. Which one do you like more? Ungelipenda mgani? Wa pili ama wa kwanza? The second one. Right. So when you go out there, kwa hivyo tunapoenda kule nje, and then you talk to these people, na uongee na hawa watu, they say have their health problem, wanapokuambia kwamba wako na matatizo ya kiafya, you say it's not easy for you. Unawaambia kwamba najua sio rahisi kwenu. And if you have similar problems, na kama wewe uko na matatizo kama haya, you can say briefly, unaweza waeleza pia hali yako umeotia. I have that problem too. Hata mimi nimekuwa na matatizo haya. I know it's not easy. Najua sio rahisi. And then you listen to that person. Na sasa unasikiliza huyu mtu. And then now there are different ways to to continue to help the person. Na kuna njia mbili ambazo zinaweza kusaidia unaweza tumia kusaidia hao watu. One you can say I have similar problem. Ya kwanza unaweza kumwambia hata mimi niko na tatizo lilo hilo. And then I pray or someone pray for me and I was healed na unamwambia kwamba niliomba ama niliombewa na nikapona. So that's sharing. Huo ni ushirika. And then and then we can say would you like us to pray for you? Na waweza kusema pia je ungelipenda ni kuombe? Na Now do you understand this? Unaelewa haya? I know the feeling. Ninaelewa jinsi unavyohisi. And I have similar problem. Na hata mimi nimekuwa na matatizo kama hayo. Someone has similar problem. Ama yule mtu mwingine unayemjua amekuwa na matatizo kama hayo. God cares about you. Na Mungu anakujali. God wants to comfort you. Mungu yuataka kukufariji. God wants to heal you. Anataka kukuponya. Now that is grace. Na hiyo ni neema. Grace is what God is he wants to do to you. Neema ni kile ambacho Mungu anataka kufanya. I'm not just telling. Press this for me. Okay. Okay. Now. It's very important we can tell them the grace of God. Ni ya muhimu kwamba tueleze hawa watu kuhusu neema ya Mungu. God cares about you. Mungu anawajali. God loves you. 
Mungu anawapenda. Come once you hear you. Mungu anataka kukuponya. Now listen to this. Sikiliza haya. This is very important. Hii ni ya muhimu. This is grace. Hii ni neema. Now look here everyone look here. Aya kila mmoja unitazame sasa. It is good to tell people grace. Ni la muhimu kuambia watu kuhusu neema. God's love. Upendo wa Mungu. God's care. Kujali ujali wa Mungu. And is we should not say it fast. I mean, too fast to say pray. That's telling people what to do. To sikuwe wepesi wakushurutisha watu omba omba apan. Instead of telling the person to pray, but ele kumambia mtu kuomba, or even to trust in God, ama ati amini kwa mungu. We can say God cares about you. Unaweza mambia unajua mungu na kujali. God wants to heal you. Mungu anataka kuponya. And can I pray for you? Na zee ungeli pena tuombe pamoja. Do you like God to bless you? Ungeli pena mungu akubariki. So first have feeling for their feelings. Ya kwanza lazima ukuwe na hisia sawa sawa na yule mwenye matatizo. Number 1. Number 2, ya pili we can share tuweza kushiriki. Number 3, ya tatu tell them the love of God for them. Waambie upendo wa Mungu kwa usu. And then offer to pray for them. Na sasa ukajitoe kuwaombea. Or have someone pray for them. Ama mtu mwingine yule aweza kuwaombea. And remember them. Na uwakumbuke. And Talk with them. Na ukaunge na o. Bring the person to us. Let our young to go to and ask them how it is. Na uwaulize yuko namna gani. And encourage them to come back again. Na sasa umwambi tena na poenda arejete. So have connection with people. So lazima uwe na munga ni kona watu. I say again. First, feel their feelings. Ya kwanza lazima ukakuwa na hisia sawa na yule mwenye matatizo. And say it's not easy for you. Na umtulize umwambie kwamba najua sio rahisi kwako. Feel the feelings. Ukahisi zile hisia zake and then we can share our similar problem. Na sasa tuweza kushiriki hali ama kipindi ulicho kipitia pia. Or someone similar problem. Ama yule mtu mingina liye pitia kipindi sawa. And then talk about the love of God. Na sasa uambie kuhusu upendo wa mungu. Would you like God to bless you? God wants to bless you. Mungu anataka kubariki. Instead of just telling the law. Badala badala ya kunena kuhusu sheria. The law is you pray. Sheria ni wewe omba. You ask God to help you. Uliza Mungu akusaidie. Now, it's not wrong to say those things. Sio vibaya kusema mambo hayo. But first Tell him the grace of God first. Lakini cha kwanza nena kuhusu neema ya Mungu kwanza. Okay, now do you have do you understand this? Mnaelewa haya? Yeah. Yeah. More grace, i neema ikuwe nyingi. More understanding, kuelewa kuwe kwingi. Share the feeling, ukashiriki hisia. Care about them, uwajali. Don't be a teacher, usikuwe mwalimu, be someone who cares. Kuwa mtu unayejali. Okay? Let's Close to the prayer. I guess you have to stand up now. Stand up now. Stand up now. To see my mekwa mikuze tu. Dear Heavenly Father, Baba we tu abinguni. Thank you for your love. Asante kwa upendo wako. Asante kwa upendo. You care about us. Una tujali. You care. You care about the people in this area. Una jali watu wenye maeneo haya. Una jali watu wa maeneo haya. Help us to have compassion on them. Ukatusaidia tu na upendo kwa u. Ukatusaidia tu na upendo. To care about them. Ili tuajali. Ili tuajali. We want to feel their feelings. Tunataka tuwe na hisia kama zao. Tunataka tuwe na hisia. We want to bring the love of God to them. Tunataka tulete upendo wa mungu kwa u. Tunataka tulete upendo wa mungu kwa u. We want to bring the grace of God to them. Tunataka tulete neema ya mungu kwa u. Tunataka tulete neema ya mungu kwa u. We want to care about them. Tunataka kuajali. Tunataka kuajali. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, sit down for a moment and I'll just... I have to get to Kidogo, I'll have to end. Now, if there are some people who are willing to believe in Jesus, Kama basi kutakuwa na watu ambao wako tayari kuamini kwa Kristo Yesu, How many people are able to talk with them, listen to them and pray for them? Ni watu wangapi ambao wako tayari kuwaombea na kuwaongelea hatu inuwe tu mikono sote. How many of you are willing to do that? Tubebe mikono. Ni wangapi wako tayari kufanya hivyo kuwaombea, kuwaongelea. Okay, good. Now, so when we invite the people, so tunapo ita watu, and some people say they are willing to come up, 
na watu waseme kwamba wako tayari kukuja and i would encourage you and then i will say the counselors na sasa yeye atamkisikia akisema kwamba counselors ama wale washauri mkuje muongee na watu ndo nyinyi ambao mko hapo ndo nyinyi ndo washauri to go up to this person people mtawaendea hao watu now where to you can pray for them unaweza kuwaombea and then you can listen to them unaweza kusikiliza matatizo yao and help them na ukawasaidie and then maybe to get the phone numbers how to contact them if na they're willing ukajaribu kutafuta nambari zao za simu ili tukapate kuwa na kuunganika so are you willing to do that je yes. mko tayari kufanya hayo yes. yes okay good